Hey MW, I'm Melissa. And I'm Stephanie Carcace, and we are two sisters and your hosts of Millennial Women Talk, the podcast, the number one place for millennial women looking to elevate their lives, mind, body, and soul. We are so grateful you're sharing your time with us today. By tuning into this episode, you're investing in becoming the best version of you, and we're thrilled to be on this journey together. In today's episode of Millennial Women Talk, we welcome Henry Costa. Henry is the CEO and co-founder of the daily worship and meditation app, Glorify. Henry started his career in finance before joining the British military and later moved to Africa as part of the founding team at Jumo.World, which he grew to become the largest mobile lending company in Africa, employing 350 people and raising over $100 million. He holds multiple board and advisory positions and is an active angel investor. On this episode, we chat about how the app got started, the challenges he faced along the way, and how Glorify is providing channels for Christians around the world to stay rooted in their relationship with God through this app. And here is our conversation with Henry Costa. Okay, Henry, we're so excited to have you on the show because I found the app first before I shared it with Steph, and I found it actually through Sadie Robertson's Instagram, and I was specifically looking for an app like this, right? Because I've never seen an app where you have your verse in the morning, your devotional, and then your meditation, and I fell in love. I sent it to her. I go, please check this out. This is amazing, and it's truly changed our morning routine. Absolutely, and you know, it's something that's just been such a blessing in our own lives, yeah. but we're just so curious, like, how did this idea even come to be? Yeah, well, I'm firstly so happy to hear um, that you're both users and it's both helped you in your journey. And that was really the starting point. I've been so blessed in my life. I'd had amazing exposure to technology. Um, and I wanted just to combine technology with massive impact and really looking at the area of, of Christianity and looking at the technology solutions out there. I thought we were really lagging the rest of the world. And so I wanted to bridge that gap. I was really concerned about the idea of Christians being relegated to second-class tech citizens, because if that happens, then you just, we keep losing out. We keep losing out and the secular world just keeps going forward and forward and forward. And, and so I wanted to combine those two. I wanted to bring, you know, you know, create the best team, build the best user experience, the best product in, in this space, really to, to come to, to address that, that problem, which was that morning routine you know, and encouraging people and gamifying that experience so that it was easier because I struggled with it. And uh, so I thought if it was just, it wouldn't be, just be me who struggled. I'm sure other people do. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's interesting what you're saying because as the world has evolved, right? And, you know, we have all these apps. And so being a Christian, right? When the world has evolved the way it has, and then it's like, oh, you have to open up the Bible and all of that just seems so unevolved in a way, <laughs> right? Um, and I do think that that's why an app like Glorify is just incredible because it really is, a, has evolved, you know? And when you're talking about Christianity and how it was a little bit lagged, like insert Glorify and voila, like it's amazing. Yeah. And I would love to know, because usually creators always create from a place of need, and there was definitely a need for this. But I would also love to know, like, where were you at in your personal life when you were, when you had this idea of creating Glorify? Yeah, so I think you're completely right. There was a, there was a need, but before you know, I saw that need, and um, before I started, well, I knew about the need before I started, you know, searching for the solution to the need. Um, really, you know, I I had to go and search for that, but. But I bring it back to, I, you know, I came back to the UK. I was living out in Africa. We had um, you know, been building this financial technology firm there. And I came back to the UK and I thought, I really want to start something using technology. I want to start something that has massive impact, something that I'm deeply passionate about and something that ultimately can, can change the world. And that's when Glorify came about. And, and that's the journey that, that we've been on as a team trying to, create the best user experience really for Christians and trying to address that that need, whether it's you don't have the Bible with you or you, you might be in, in public and you actually you don't want to get your, your Bible out or right. you don't know which passage to read or you're, you've run out of your guide or the passage is too long or 
we created something that was bite-sized. It's manageable. It's for every day. And if you have five minutes, then it's for you. But if you want to give it an hour, then it's for you as well. So that flexibility, I thought, was was so key. Um, and, oh, yes. and that unknowing that can would always stop me. I'd open a Bible and go, where do I start today? But you know, we, we aim just to give, give that answer. You know, I love that you said that, Henry, because that was really why I loved it so much and why I told everybody about it, because I was on my own personal journey of, you know, I wanted to get into like some sort of Bible study and really understand it, but I didn't want to like invest all this time. I wanted to figure out how this can fit into my crazy schedule. And that's why Glorify is so great because it's bite, you just said it, it's bite size. Right. I'm able to get what I need and get my day started and still be you know, reflective and connected to the source, right? And I don't know if you meditated today. I'm sure you did because in London, I believe it's almost 4 p.m. If I'm not mistaken, or if not 4 p.m. Um, but today's, you know, verse was Jeremiah chapter one, verse one through eight. And as we reflected in today's word, I felt it was actually pretty fitting for our conversation today. So I want to ask you, when the calling was placed on your heart to create this app, did you ever feel unqualified or unprepared to make this app a reality? Yeah, the whole time. Um, you know, for, for me, starting, I've got these two beliefs. One is um, surround yourself with the best people and with the right people, you can do anything. Um, and the other is it, it, it's more important to understand where you're weak rather than understanding where you're strong. Because I think in those areas of weakness where you can surround yourself with people who can build them up so you have an overall strength or it's those areas of weakness where you can focus and you can build yourself up and upskill you in those areas. So. I'm, I'm always unqualified. I'm, I'm sure I'm, I am, but I've surrounded a great team. Um, and you know, my job is really to give, glorify the resources that it needs to be able to continue on its journey. Yes, I love that. You, when I hear you speak, like you sound like such a leader, right? You have drive, but you also have humility. And so that's really great to hear because so many people see success, right? This app, how it's making an impact that truly is on a massive scale. But it's really great to hear from from the creator, like how how, you know, humble you are. And, you know, you know, you're talking about your strengths and your weaknesses. But I want to dive a little bit deeper because a lot of people think when you have a calling and you execute on that. Right. And it's perfectly aligned. You know, it's it's what God placed in your heart, that it's all going to go smooth sailing. And it's just not like that. And so I want to I want you to share a little bit, you know, right now. What were some of those challenges that you faced, you know, during this journey and possibly still face on a day to day of, of running Glorify the app? Yeah, I mean, challenges left, right and center. I mean, I think we're facing challenges, you know, every day. One, we're, we're, we're battling against, the, um, you know, we're in a world, we're like an island. We're in a secular world of, of technology and we're doing something that's faith based. So that's something that you're you're always fighting against. I think you're fighting to to ensure, you know, at the beginning, we didn't know if anyone would like it. Um, and, and at the beginning, our, our first iteration of the app was, it wasn't actually that good. Um, but we then just you followed the data and we just had to be confident that we could get it there by speaking to our users, by looking at the data that we were seeing of how people were using it, by getting feedback of what they what people really wanted. We could change that. And we could just make it better and better and better. And, and, you know, it's been an amazing journey. And we're really you know, happy where it is now, but we've got a long way to go. Um, but it was a, you know, that, having that confidence and that faith throughout that we will get there. And even if, you know, at the beginning when we launched it, we weren't actually that in, impressed with our results after the first kind of month. We were, we were a bit disheartened, very disheartened. You know, thought I might have to go and get, you know, do something else. But then... You know, we, we just had faith and confidence in where we were going and we've been guided in an amazing path and, and we're, we're so thankful for where we are now. I love that. In, in those moments where you want to give up, right, I think we all can relate to those moments throughout our life. You know, what what do you do to get yourself back with that, you know, energy and excitement to, you know, to, to say, I have to keep going? What do you personally do when you want to give up? Well, I think it's it's faith is the most important thing and, and confidence in that. And and I think that's easier to say than than do actually. But the journey that I embarked on was so it was it was so prayerful, and I was so confident in that it was the right journey that I think you can't give up on something 
until actually the journey comes to an end. And mm -hmm. at any moment when you think I'm giving up, then that's often the wrong, wrong thing. It's actually, you know, the door may close on you. Not everything does work out. But I like that to be down to external reasons rather than you know, me giving it up. So um, I, I like to dig deep and, and see where I can take this without my own failings be the result of, um, of that door closing. I love, I love that. that. I love that. It's really leaning into your faith and why it was placed in your heart to begin with, right? Because it's essentially, it's, it's a mission that we're all on and it's our job to complete it. And you're right, sometimes the door does close and right. we do have to move on. But, but I'm glad that you didn't give up because this has really been so special for, for us and, and I know so it's going to be for our audience. You mentioned something about when it first launched that, you know, it wasn't that good. You know, was the app well received at first, meaning people saw the value or was it just like a, a visual? Like what, what, talk to me a little bit about that journey in the beginning where you were like, oh, this isn't very good yet. Yeah, it's, it's the funny thing about building apps is at the beginning, you just go on what you think, think it should look like. You have no data right. to go on. You can speak to people and we spoke to loads of people, but you can't speak to that many people because but you can do surveys and speak to as many as you can but it's going with your gut feeling of what's not there and what is there and you think oh you know slam dunk i know exactly <laughs> what the market wants the problem is is you built an app for yourself and mm -hmm. you know that's that's not everyone and so that's exactly what we did we built an app for for us and we launched it and we realized that we weren't the same as everyone else and we, we saw how people were using it and we had to, we had to edit it. You know, people loved the content, but sometimes we started it and we found out that actually certain sections were too long, some were too short. Um, the, a lot of the design needed to be changing. A lot of the, the way we'd package it together had changed, but the core of the experience people adored. Um, but actually it wasn't, it wasn't good enough for us to devote you know, the future of our careers into it. Six months later, it was a very different story. Um, and that is much easier when that app's out there because we see how people are using it and we can understand from that. At the beginning, it's really a lot of guesswork. And sometimes you can guess wildly wrong. I love that. Yeah. So it's about pivoting too and being able to, to take that feedback and then be like radically honest, like it's not good. <laughs> and we got to pivot, we got to change. Um, I'm really curious, like how did the name Glorify come about? Like how did you decide to name this app glorify well, glorify is um a name that i now absolutely adore but it wasn't it's, it wasn't always its name we started off okay. being called being called quiet time and okay. that was when we were in beta before we'd launched it and we were just testing testing the app we all got rather attached to the name quiet time but um we couldn't get the trademark for it and the person who had the trademark didn't want to didn't want to give it up which is absolutely fine we went back to the drawing board um, and we, it was a really painful process uh, of trying to get to the right place. And then suddenly we came across Glorify and it was like a shining light because it's everything that we want to be doing. We want to be glorifying you know, God's word. We want to be glorifying the users who are uh, listening to God's word. And, we, and, and that was the, it gave us the right emotions we wanted to come out of the app. And yeah. you're seeing the designs there, you've got to, a sun and we wanted to be like a sun radiating his burden so um we have in the secular world a spotify and a shopify and, and i thought it yeah. was very uh, you know notable that we should have a tour i love that yeah. i have such a branding marketing brain so when i came across like glorified like it really is exactly just so mm -hmm. clear like the messaging what to expect from it it's it's just so good so i love that you had mentioned that that it wasn't the name in the beginning but it's the perfect name it really is really i awesome. can't picture it being quiet time now i'm like i know i can't not i'm like no that's not it yeah <laughs> i love that you know it didn't work out and you guys even tried like with the trademark all that stuff and i just love to hear like the reality of things because sometimes we just see things at the success where we're glorify where glorify is today but to hear things like this is just always so validating for so for me and for also our listeners right now or viewers whoever might be watching this or listening you know how things are not smooth sailing but it always works out the way it's meant to be and so like i i think i know how to use the app 
to its fullest potential, but I would always love to hear from the creator, like how can we utilize the app to its fullest potential um, so that we can make the most out of our experience? Yeah, great question. So, so for me, um, I'm a big believer in little and often. So I wasn't someone who could dive in deep for an hour every single day because I've got an incredibly short attention span. Um, and within you know, 10, 15 minutes, I was away thinking about something else. And that was always yeah. a problem that I struggled with. Um, so I'm a big believer that just regular connection every day, whether that's just five minutes a day, is so important to your relationship with God. And it's so important to how you are in that day. It just sets yourself up and gives you an amazing foundation. And then from that, you can build that up. But rather than try and bite off more than you can chew and try and do half an hour every single day on from January the 1st and giving up by February the 2nd, you know, a little bit and try and commit to the amount of days you can do um, but rather, you know, and not necessarily the time. So to get the maximum out of Glorify, I think try and do it every day, but also explore the other areas of the app. We, we give you a daily content um, mm -hmm. that, is, that, that is our playlist for you, our suggestion for you, but we have a whole library there are many people who are struggling with sleep, many people who are struggling with anxiety. We have meditations, prayers, declarations specifically around emotions and those subjects. And that's incredibly powerful. So I think when people come into the app and they use it in the morning, but then they address other issues based on their mood that they want. Do they want to be motivated and have a declaration? Do they want to be relaxed in the mid middle of the day and switch off for five minutes because everything's so hectic and they meditate? Or do they want to deal with an issue? like anxiety or sent to sleep at night. So there's multiple touch points in the day to use Glorify, and I view them as multiple touch points for your relationship with God. And little bits and and uh, and often is my, yes. my piece of advice there. I love that. It's so wonderful. And you're and you're so right because I have explored around the app and depending on throughout the day, you know, things always come up. We're human beings, you know, and so I always search for those things to bring me back into alignment, you know, which is how I started my day. And I believe you also have music too. I feel like I've listened to music there. Yes. Yeah. Which we have so a lot cool. of, we have a lot of music that we're really proud of. And, and what we we have three sections of music. We have motivating music, worship music, and sleep music. Um, you know, sleep is hugely on my heart. It's an issue that we really want to um, help people overcome and yeah. all the music that we have on our app, you can't find anywhere else. Um, or 95% of it, uh, it's all exclusive and, and remastered for Glorify with some of the largest worship musicians in the world. So it's really exciting. Um, and we're, we're so proud of, awesome. proud of it and more to come. Yes. I love it. I want to take this opportunity actually to give our audience and viewers a sneak peek of the Glorify app. Check this out. Welcome, I'm Lucianne. Let us cast off all anxiety right now. Say this with me. I cast all my anxiety on you because you care for me. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. You will never leave me and will never forsake me. Nothing can separate me from your love, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that as I seek you, you will answer me and deliver me from all my fears. I will not fear, for you are with me. I will not be dismayed, for you are my God. You will strengthen me and help me. You will uphold me with your righteous right hand. Henry, this is why I love this app. <laughs> 
it has really changed our life in so many ways. And I hope with this sneak peek, our audience can see the value in it and just see that, you know, it's, it's a great way to start your day and, and really grab it as a source to get you back in alignment if you get off alignment throughout the day. But I would love to know what is the best review a consumer has ever shared with you about the app? Well, we've been, we've been so blessed with some of the reviews, but also some of the emails people write in and, um, it's so encouraging for us. It's the it's when you're you're head down in your laptop and you're focusing on you know, on on building glorify, but sometimes you're in the weeds and you know there's something you're sorting out, and then you get an email that comes in from someone that says this has transformed their life. It's transformed their relationship with God. They were in a dark place, and it's really helped them through it. And that just keeps us going, you know, time and time again. So it's such a huge thanks to the people who who spent that time. Um, to write in and, and thank us for the app, which is amazing. So whenever I get get a review like that, it's um, yeah, that's why we're here. Yes, absolutely. Well, listen, our review to you too is that it it was very needed, you yeah. know, and especially after the year that everyone has really had, and we had losses in the family, and we were through a grieving process, and it really helped us through. So, you know, I think your mission and vision is celebrated and needed and we're very grateful for it yes absolutely <laughs> what is the biggest hope that you have for glorify my my pillar is every christian every day and that's what we that's what we aim for i want it to be in the hands of of, of everyone um regardless of uh, demographic regardless of um economic wealth regardless of where they where they live i want the quality of content in the christian world to be completely democratized it doesn't matter whether you're in a big city and can go to a large mega church with high production value or if you're in a small village with a small church or with a congregation of 20 you should be able to get to that same uh, quality of content uh, regardless of where you live so that's really my dream and it's a it's a long-term goal but we will we will get there in the end um, not tomorrow, but, but maybe in a few years. I love that. Absolutely. I love that you said that. And Henry, you know, do you personally use your own app? I'm sure you do. Uh, <laughs> but what are the benefits that you have personally seen using the app? I do use it. Um, <laughs> I use it every single day. Uh, I always have to get myself out of the mode of, of critiquing the app when I'm, when I'm on it and using it. But I find the uh, the things that I, I really use and the benefits that, that I get is a lot on our mind section. So I listen to a lot of declaration, a lot of meditation. And that helps me just unwind when lots of things are going through my mind and I just need a bit of time to switch off. But I want that rooted in God. And I want to switch off with the word of God being passed over me. And so that's where I really find huge value. And it's given me this this foundation of the day, I call it my, my Holy Spirit foundation, is when you start off from a good place, that, that, that phrase, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, which I, yeah. my toddler did today, for instance. But that, that phrase, I think, is, is let's wake up on the right side of the bed every day. To do that, mm -hmm. I think it's really key to start the day off with those strong foundations. And that's yeah. what I do. Um, to try and I love That's that. That's so good. And rooted in God. I love that. What is a message of encouragement that you can give to our audience when it comes to rooting their relationship and also setting their day up with God? Well, I think it's it's doing everything in, in complete confidence. And if you do everything in confidence with God, how you set that structure up, everyone's different. No one will have the same as someone else or, or oh, you, you might, but there's no reason for you to. Yours might be completely different. So it's working with what works for you, whether your channel to God is through worship music or your channel to God is through dance or expression or reading scripture or, um, or reflection or prayer. Everyone, those different channels, they're all just mediums between us and God that we can, we can communicate through really. And it's, and it's working on which one is the best for you. And I think sometimes people feel like they have to read a little bit of the Old Testament, bit of the New Testament, Psalm, Proverb, then pray, then reflect. And then they have they struggle with time. But actually, you find out what's the best way of you know, 
that, of strengthening that relationship. And that's the bit to focus on. And do that bit with confidence that this is the best way uh, for you. And I think it'll pay huge dividends in, in your spiritual health. I love that. I love that. That's so powerful, Henry. You're amazing. We're so grateful for you and grateful for this app and for being on the show today. Um, you know, it's it's really changed our life in the best way possible. And I'm excited to continue to see the app flourish and grow and just continue to be of service and of value to so many people. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure to be on the show. It's been amazing to talk about Glorify. I can I love talking to anyone about Glorify because... <laughs> um, you know, we want to glorify the world. So thank you very much. Thank you so thank much, you, Henry. <laughs> All the best. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. You can download the Glorify app in the App Store and use promo code MWTALK and receive 50% off the subscription plan. That is amazing. Subscribe and leave us a review on all of your favorite platforms. This helps us continue to bring you inspirational conversations just like this to you every single week. And text us to the phone number below for subscriber-only freebies and perks to help you become the best version of yourself. We encourage you to continue on with the conversation, keep being the strong, amazing woman that you are, and never forget to live inspired. Until next time, MW, always love Melissa and Stephanie Carcace.